I, I also heard in your you know initial submissions that uh, the election had witnessed, or currently we have about eight cases ongoing. Uh, there were so many things happening that happened on the 2020 election, but the electoral commissioner speaking at uh, the ECOWAS parliament had this to say. I want you to listen, and then when you come, I want to have your reaction. I think your party chairman, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Your party chairman says the party is going to react. So hopefully uh, we'll get that reaction from you since you are in the connected there. So let's be the first place that you, you know, react to uh, the electoral commissioner or the party will react to the electoral commissioner. So we'll be back. Let's take a listen and then we'll talk about it when we get to the after that. Mr. President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to the glory of God, I'm pleased to say that Ghana held an election in December 2020 that proved that the story of elections in our sub-region can indeed be an inspiration. That our story as West African states can be one that brings hope to our youth and light to the coming generations. And that we can provide best practices that, they are most, that the most advanced democracies of the world can learn from. Yes, we can. I humbly refer to Ghana's 2020 elections as historic for the transparency, the credibility, the cost effectiveness, the high turnout, and the peaceful conduct that characterized it. So orderly, so methodical, so calm were the polls on the 7th of December 2020 that BBC could find no other way to describe our elections than boring. We refer to them as historic, also because all our electoral processes and the election itself were conducted at the, in the height of the COVID-19 pandemic without the spread of the virus. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm aware that I'm supposed to be giving a goodwill message but please permit me to highlight a few of the successes of Ghana's 2020 election. We proved that elections in our sub-region can be run efficiently in spite of the odds and challenges. Yeah, we heard, uh, we just played, I just played the, the uh, electoral commissioner, Jen Mensa, uh, speaking to the ECOWAX parliament. What she's saying there. I mean, the crowd she's saying it to, uh, and that contest that you know we 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 have uh, executed an election that CNN described as or BBC described as boring. In the context of West Africa, you know, is she right? Uh, and also the reference to the transparency and all that. Uh, how is or what is your party's reaction to this? Okay, let me say that uh, talking about. Um the reaction from the party, I would say that the party is going to react um, very soon. Just to also add that um, on Monday, we are going to have a press conference and that will be on the um, fuel price because uh, just this year, fuel prices has been increased for about uh, 13 times, if I am right, just about 13 times this year. And so we are going to state our position on it. And I don't know if perchance uh, the response of the EC chair would, would, would pass through, but I don't know, you know, but uh, um, what I will say is that this is the worst elections ever in the history of Ghana. I am also saying this because um, both NPP and NDC are uh, in court with, uh, I think, five cases each. Talking about um, the parliament, for instance, they are saying that things didn't go well in Pusiga, where they are contesting the results. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the five, the five, um, all the five, uh, constituencies that they are challenging, the MPP is challenging, but I know on authority that uh, they have taken five uh, seats to, 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 to court. Whilst right. we are also challenging them on five seats, right. yes, one of the, one of um, uh, the popular ones are the 
uh, Tetri Man, and mm-hmm. then uh, Seshiri also, Takwa, mm-hmm. Israel, and all that. We right. are also challenging them in five uh, 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 constituencies. So how will you be proud if you are an EC chair? Why? How will you be proud on mm-hmm. every uh, on, on an election like this? You understand? Right. And that mm-hmm. will also add that. And these are all on parliamentary levels. That for the mm-hmm. first time, you've introduced something on uh, uh, regional coalition centers. Mm-hmm. This we never had that in our history. We only had uh, constituency coalition centers where all the tw- 275 uh, results are transmitted from the various constituencies straight to the strong room that is in Accra. Because the constitution that, mandates the electoral chair yeah. as the only returning officer yeah, so I'm yeah. saying that uh, she said she did that to make her job easier. Instead of receiving from 270 uh, polling stations, she's only re- uh, uh, constituencies, she's only receiving from uh, 16 regions. No. You see, the responsibility that the constitution has given to you, you mm-hmm. cannot say that you are, you are giving that uh, responsibility out there for people to do it on your behalf. It is not done. So it means that you are the one, it is one of the reasons why she refused to go to the dock when we took her to court because she couldn't answer for some of the things that happened at the regional level. She couldn't speak to it because that was your responsibility and you couldn't live up to that expectation. Then again, talking about the court cases, we've had elections where the uh, security Mm -hmm. were also brutally uh, 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 brute to the citizens of the Republic of Ghana. That we had eight people not dying from anywhere but from policing centers. Mm -hmm. It means that the polling stations were peaceful but the collation center, where the law says that mm. we don't do counting there, we just do tallying. We don't do re uh, 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 counting there. Tablet. We mm-hmm. do collation. We do, but that is where that the eight people, people were stopped. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, they are not counted there. It is just the sheets. The collated sheets are the various branches that are brought there for tabulation to be done. Mm-hmm. So how could this be, be so difficult to the extent that people had to lose their lives just because the the, 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 the electoral commissioner and the ruling party were in cohorts to change mm-hmm. the mandate of the people? How do you decide right, after creating regions in 2018 after creating region, you sit mm-hmm. down a day to the elections. Let me say 12 days, 12 hours to the elections mm-hmm. before you tell the people of San Trocofi, mm-hmm. Lipe, Lolobi, and then, uh, 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 how do you call it? Uh, San Trocofi, Akpapu, Lipe, and then Lolobi. So, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you cannot be part of the elections of 2020. Unprecedented. Parliamentary and election candidate, of president. Exactly. And the candidates were going round campaigning, spending money. But the MPP knew that these people would take them out. They are not going to vote. Mm-hmm. Based on that, the uh, 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 current MP for Hohe never campaigned mm-hmm. anywhere around uh, Lipe, San Trocofi, and the others because mm-hmm. he knew that this was time. going to happen. And he knew ahead of time. You understand? And well, NDC, not knowing this, also chose our candidate from uh, the South. Right. You understand? So if right. we have such an electoral commission who says mm-hmm. that she's an inspiration to other countries, I bet mm-hmm. to differ. 
We have seen, we have <laughs> seen the boldness with which this was executed, though. Can you imagine that 12, I mean, how do we allow this type of things to happen in Ghana? Where within 12 hours before an election, uh, the electoral commissioner with a stroke of a pen disenfranchised a whole community. I like that, but a stroke of a pen, a whole community, four, four large communities, you said they are not going to vote because you desperately needed a vote in a, a, a seat in the Volta region. Mm -hmm. You understand? So if it means that you have to break necks, you have to twist people's arms for you to get that seat, you are ready to do it. Right. You understand? And for the first time that guns have been introduced into our elections, she should be ashamed of herself. Mm -hmm. She should be ashamed of herself. <laughs> All right, so knowing that this is what you are playing with, knowing you, the NDC, knowing that they have to deal with this electoral commissioner, this is an electoral commissioner that is willing to, by the stroke of a pen, like you said, uh, take out Santro Kofi, Akbafu, Lulubi, and Likpe. Uh, this is an electoral commissioner who, uh, the same electoral commissioner is saying that he's, you know, uh, she, 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 she's done excellent. She's telling you your face to echo us that she's done excellent. CNN is calling it boring. How do you deal with such an electoral commissioner as a party in opposition? This is the government who is willing to disenfranchise, do anything, maneuver. You know, how do you prepare yourself to win power back from, uh, you know, this opponent of yours? How are Should you be told. Mm -hmm. Truth be told, um, power emanates from the people. Mm -hmm. And I can assure you that, you see, um, for instance, in Ayawasu West Wagon, where our agents were shot, like uh, uh, um, people going for game in the forest. Mm -hmm. We never knew. We've always had violence in elections and all that, but we never knew that guns could be introduced in elections until recently. And you see, because of that, the NDC as a party have done some proposals for the Electoral Commission mm -hmm. and some amendments that needs to be done before mm -hmm. the next elections. Right. Um, these are some of the things that we think that when addressed, Right. It is going to save our elections because uh, what, there's an account. On top of your head, what are some of the highlights of that proposal? What do you, what exactly do you want to see the electoral commissioner change? First of all, um, there's this issue of this coalition centers at the various regions. We mm. want it changed. Okay. Then again, the issue of separating the administrative wing of the electoral commission and then the uh, uh how do you call it the operational wing of the um electoral commission because mm -hmm. sometimes um people are just called in based on their political affiliations to come and do stuff for the electoral commission mm -hmm. we want to have two separate electoral commissions then again the ipac you know, we want IPAC oh, to you have want, you want a division, you want a divisions in the electoral commission so exactly made independent yes, of each with, other. Exactly. So that right. we still we still have one electoral commissioner, but we have yeah, the yeah. administrative wing and yes, so, so that some of the things that happen will not happen. Then IPAC mm -hmm. that we have IPAC has led a lot of changes in our electoral reforms in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And all these re uh, 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 reforms from opaque ballot boxes to colored voter ID cards and all those mm -hmm. things were all from IPAC. So we want that the IPAC will have some few laws back in them so that um, when things need to be done or we want to see change, it will not be at the whims and caprices of uh, some few individuals. When the uh, entire IPAC decides that this is the direction we are going, we are mm -hmm. going to compel the Electoral Commission to do it. You know, um, on on top on top of my, of my head, I I I cannot get a lot of these uh, uh, changes. And then again, we also want to maintain the uh, five o'clock. Uh, how do you call it? It's uh, the the eight to five calendar, unlike the uh, 
uh, eight to three o'clock that the electoral commission is proposing you know mm-hmm. for the 2024 elections you know so then we also want uh like the courts the supreme court does for uh, um uh, election disputes that they set mm-hmm. dates you to be resolved mm-hmm. we also want to see that for the uh, uh, parliamentary uh, how do you call it if we can empower the high court or also have a, a, a guideline for them to be able to re- yes so we have to have a, 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 a we have to have a deadline for these litigations and solving this dispute at the parliamentary level because we cannot go on forever you mm-hmm. know whilst uh, for instance, in Techiman, where all our tabulation is showing that we won the seat mm-hmm. while somebody has been declared, we can't mm-hmm. sit forever waiting for the cause to make these uh, 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 things happen. So, so, as the Supreme Court be able to have be empowered to also sit on these cases and give a mandate, a, 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 a specific uh, timeline for these things to be resolved and all that. So there are proposals that uh, uh, we've been invited to IPAC, but unfortunately, mm-hmm. uh, uh, but we'll make sure that we, 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 we get this thing, we pull it through, we'll engage all the political parties to see reasoning in changing uh, the status quo and get the best out of our elections. Great, great. Okay, 